You think Snowy Survival had lore? This lore is literally wild. But before that, I want to thank you for making One Way Out, the purple card key video, my most watched video on the channel. But 98% are unsubscribed still. I'm trying to make this channel something I can invest more time in, and subscribing helps us on this journey to explore EdTech and GimKit. So, One Way Out was released, and with that release, it multiplied the lore found in Snowy Survival to both. In the given lore, there are three different stories playing out. The first story tells us what happened on the ship. The second story is about what's happening in a Matrix-like world. And the last story is happening to the person you're playing as. But let's get into the first story, since it's the most informational and evidence is tied to it. Part 1, The Ship Logs. A few years ago, to impress my mother-in-law, I watched the entire series of Star Trek only to find out that she never watched the original series. Yeah, there was episodes looking at this know-it-all, all to eventually discover it was for nothing. But in watching that, I saw the most mean part of the series, the captain's log. Captain's log In the beginning of each episode and after every break, the captain of the ship recorded a message logging the events that unfolded on the ship. Around the ship of One Way Out, you will find similar logs documenting the origins and unfolding of the plant monster crisis. When reading the logs in order of their log numbers, it's pretty straightforward documentation of the events, but looking closer, more questions arise than answers. The first log in chronological order we find is Ship Log 37. It says the ship is stable. The trajectory toward the moon-like destination of Tenebris looks smooth, the crew is positive, but there's a misaligned actuator in the garden that they cannot fix. Ship Log 43 is the next in the order, and it says that the ship vitals remain stable, but Dr. Aventon notices a strange odor in the garden that's not the smell of gas or rotten plants. The logger claims Aventon's best guess is a chemical reaction with chlorophyll in the artificial atmosphere of the ship. Ship log 48, we see the ship is healthy, but the garden is overgrown and grows back quickly when trims are cut. This is also where we see the logger considering turning back for the first time. Ship log 54 states that the plants have evolved into gems themselves, in quotes, and they are attempting to take over the ship called the Alpha Star, so they're aborting the mission and returning home immediately. Now, log 54 says that the plants are growing more into gems, and no matter how quickly they dispose of them, they grow back. Also, crewmates are getting ill. Log 62 says that the plant gems are finally fighting back using gadgets, forcing the crew and a logger to barricade themselves in the beginning part of the game mode. Also, the logger made muffins. The final log we find is log 64, where food is running low and Pulsar plans for the crew to escape. They plan to escape in multiple escape pods, fighting against the plants along the way. Now, there are other notes like a blueberry muffin recipe, Dr. Aventon's note, the mission objective, and a first page of a story in the library area. In the purple card video, there is a text cutscene as well as an array of item descriptions. So these are the puzzle pieces that can be put together to make three separate pictures. At face value, Using the ship logs alone, we can paint a general summary. The crew was heading to the moon, called the Tenebris, to do something with plants and return home. But an event occurred where the plants turned into gems, attacked the crew, and they decided to escape. Seems pretty simple, but there are a few things we should be asking. What are they planning to do on the Tenebris? What caused the plants to change? Why did the evil plants attack? Did the crew actually escape? Why are monsters holding key cards and why aren't monsters holding purple key cards? So, what are they planning to do on the Tenebris? Tenebris is a moon very similar to Earth's moon. Using the mission objective, the crew was going to release Carboflux, place horticulture vessels, and collect Novarite. So, Novarite could be one of two things. The real world equivalent of Novarite uh, comes from the water-soluble salt component that goes in dishwasher detergents. Novarite seems to be a fictional material, though, which is basically a piece of metal found in a Nova. 
you know, like a star or a sun, a supernova, something like that. Meteorite, nova right. Okay, so like meteor is a piece of a meteor, nova right's a piece of a nova. It's said to have magical properties to house magic similar to the wooden wand, a stone, or some other element. This will be important later, seriously important, but we gotta put it to the side. Now, carboflux is a carbon that moves through the carbon cycle that releases from inside living or dead organisms, even buried in soil. Horticulture vessels are plants, aka living organisms. So to put this bluntly, I think we're making a place where Chemical Supreme can be produced. The ingredients from Snowy Survival seem to fit the same recipe here. Carboflux has the gold keys, soil, and even plastic. Collecting Novarite can be a way to make the ground less salty or sodium heavy as they can use the Novarite for their own needs. And the horticulture vessels were to be planted south of the ship's landing spot and would ultimately be used to regulate the atmosphere. Plants need carbon dioxide to survive. Carboflux produces carbon that would be consumed by the plants, which turns into oxygen in the atmosphere of the moon. The carbo cycle would keep spiraling and regulating itself. So what caused the plants to change? Looking at the first couple of logs, we see that there's a misaligned actuator in the garden, and we see a person named Dr. Aventon who believes that there is a chemical reaction between the chlorophyll and the artificial atmosphere of the ship. But here's where the first inconsistency is. The misaligned actuator in a spacecraft in real life seems to possibly deal with the smoothness of travel, but it could also release chemicals or damage the environment around it. The logger said it wasn't messing with either the health of the ship, but it could have been messing with the health of the garden. Secondly is Dr. Aventon. The logger says Dr. Aventon theorized on why the garden smelled the way it did, but when digging a bit more, we know that Dr. Aventon said the lie. Aventon made a theory as if he didn't know why it smelled like it did. However, when reading Dr. Aventon's journal, it says this. Dr. Aventon is apparently the expert over the garden. He talks about how he wanted to try something new. He says to avoid light rationing on a return trip home, he'll add a couple of extra sprinkles of Chemical Supreme to the control plants. He just watered them. This is not mentioned in the log, so I could conclude that Aventon withheld that part of the truth from the logger who is more like a captain or so on the ship. Also, on a side note, who risks putting chemicals on plants just to avoid light rationing on the return trip? Couldn't they enjoy a little light food, a little diet on the way home? Were they even eating the plants? We see broccoli around, but the reason this is concerning is the mission objective says that they need to place 12 horticultural vessels on the Tenebris. If these plants were meant to be eaten, there wouldn't have been light rationing needed. These were vessels they were placing on the Tenebris, the moon thing. So Avatar lied, but that misaligned actuator is interesting also because it says to typically occur due to an application error. That means that somebody possibly installed it incorrectly. Anyway, the plants became gives because Dr. Aventon put Chemical Supreme on one or more plants. Over time, more plants became gives. And as you run through the one way out map, you see destroyed flasks and beakers, possibly previously holding more Chemical Supreme. There's also a container of what looks like expired Chemical Supreme. Remember, it's only survival, it only had 10 seconds before it expired if it wasn't picked up. Anyway, that's where the evil plants come from. Now, why did the evil plants attack? The logger mentioned that plants evolved into gems themselves. That word themselves can apply that the crew and logger were gems or gems are creatures the humans are aware of, but they may not really like. I say this because the logger mentions disposing of them before they actually started using gadgets in defense. It was because the crew was knocking out evil plants before the plant gives even attacked. So I thought about it. If plants were turning into humans in real life, would humans dispose of them? I assume there would be a moral debate on whether to destroy non-aggressive things that look like me, act like me, all that kind of stuff. But if that plant turned into something that wasn't my species, I would be more willing to dispose of it. So it's still in my thoughts that the crew was human 
and the plant gems were recognized as gems, but there's a dislike for them and an assumption that they were taking over the ship. So the next question is, did the crew actually escape? The easy answer is maybe. In the escape room, we see a space suit with boots and oxygen taken. We know this can't be the Polaris cosmetics origin because Polaris didn't wear boots, just the helmet. There were only three spacesuits because these suits were probably for people performing repairs on the ship or doing actual moonwalks when they land to place the plants and all that good stuff. So even though the crew could be large, not everyone needed a spacesuit. The log says they barricaded themselves in the bridge and that crew members were getting ill. Low health game modes can reflect ill crew members and the impossible game mode can represent when they actually attempted their escape. We see throughout the log that the evil plant gives slowly became smarter over time. If we waited too long to start our escape, that could represent the impossible game mode since the aim, firing rate, and health of the games are better. The issue is that if there was an escape, why is the barricade still there unless our actual crew is the escaping team? Due to what I shared earlier about the crew more than likely being human, I don't think the Gims are the original crew, but possibly reenacting events. The log says that the plant Gims started using gadgets. However, all we see them using is the wooden wand. This implies that the wooden wands were the original crew's gadgets. Think about the gadgets available to you during the game mode. Their descriptions talk about competition, as if they're competing against each other for fun, not escaping a ship. Even the leadership board ranks players by the number of knockouts, not distance from the escape pod or anything. The games are playing. They even had the nerve to misunderstand what the muffins were for and made a muffin launcher. The logger mentions making muffins to help the crew feel better, so why would the crew be launching them? I mean, yeah, shooting muffins across the room feels good, but not if I'm sick. So these gims are simply reenacting or playing as they explore. The last piece of evidence that this is the case is the text cutscene after you find the wooden wand and return to the library to remember your roots. If the gim you play as was a part of the original crew, it would make sense to the gim that he or she would have aided actually in the building of the spaceship. But this gim is confused. Scared. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm actually part of this. Imagine going on a vacation to another country, then something clicks in your mind and you say, wait a minute, I built that store over there. I don't know when or why, but I remember doing it. The original crew is separate from the Gims. As you look deeper into the game mode, you see how the original crew did not escape. When you reach the end of the game mode, you ride in an escape pod. That means that some crew members before you did not leave. You see how each gate needs a number of swipes from different key cards to open. This is a real world security measure to make sure everyone is held accountable for their actions. Prisons do this. Security clearances and governments do this. Even TV shows like Avatar The Last Airbender does this where multiple people have to perform the same move in order to pass a gate. So a large number of crew members are needed to pass these areas. At least 20 in the last stage. And why do the evil plants have the key cards to begin with? If Avatar was really feeding people vegetables that have been watered with chemical supreme, could it mean that some crew members were becoming the gim plants? Could that be why they are holding green key cards? Are boss plants who drop the golden key cards those higher ranked in the crew? Why else would the plants have these cards? With all the evidence, I doubt the entire crew made it, if any of them did. But what about the missing space suit and the open hatch, you may ask? I believe we know who took this suit and left the Alpha Star after sabotaging the actuator in the garden. After collecting the golden key cards, we go into the second stage room, bridge, to find a room filled with legendary gadgets, a purple key card, and a barely visible note saying the crafter was here. This answers the question of why the evil plants aren't holding the purple key cards. We already established that the gadgets are made by the Gims who weren't a part of the original escape event. These weapons were put here after the fact. However, 
this room was used as a vault for something else, the storage of Chemical Supreme. When looking at the fact that Dr. Aventon was using it in his garden and the proximity of the garden from this vault is literally a room away, we can see how easily he could have accessed the Chemical Supreme without the logger catching wind of it. So I believe the one who actually takes the spacesuit, opens the hatch, and leaves is the crafter. The quick reason is because the first purple key card is in the vault where the crafter left the message and the last purple key card is at the missing spacesuit. The reason I believe you can't see purple key cards until you collect them in a specific order is the crafter's way of telling a story. This entire time, one by one, the crafter is unlocking memories. We see this in Snowy Survival where an echo log says he keeps seeing Project Map. You are seeing purple cards magically appear. Ultimately, you are led through various paths to find all the cards and fight the final boss where you get a wooden wand. The original gadget of the original crew. The wand has the same power and speed and damage as the evil plants in Gim Possible. And to add to that, the wooden wand that the original crew had, the idea there is that they wanted to use the Nova Rite to activate the botanical spell, which is the description of the wand. They wanted to activate that botanical spell in order to activate more things on the Tanabris to actually grow not just with Chemical Supreme, they weren't even planning on using Chemical Supreme in that way. They wanted to use the wand in order to grow plants and change the atmosphere of the Tanabri's moon in order to make it more sustainable to grow more Chemical Supreme for their own uses and methods, not to grow plants on the moon, okay? So that is what the Novarite was for from the beginning. And this wooden wand unlocks your memory a bit when going into the library. You were shocked and confused. You remember building a spacecraft you were on. However, if you built the spacecraft, could you have been the one to misalign the actuator? But also, this game is surprised that he built the ship. We talked about that earlier, but as we can assume, the crafter left the ship. Who was the crafter leaving the message to? Vesper? The game he didn't want to be found by? Or was it all a trick to mislead the Gims into finding him? These questions can be found in the next installment of the Gim Kit lore. I believe the ship was sabotaged by the crafter to cease the Chemical Supreme being made in the Tanabris. But that's all I have for today. Have a great rest of the day. Have a great rest of the... Have a great rest of the...